Hi, it's KB here with Black Girl Nerds on the red carpet of the world premiere of Spike Lee's She's Gotta Have It, the new Netflix series that debuts on Thanksgiving Day. Well, how are you? I'm doing well. Hi. I'm KB with Black Girl Nerds. Hi. Black Girl Nerds, yes. I love that. <laughs> Thanks. There wonderful. are so many of us. I know, I know, it's wonderful. <laughs> it is. Um, so tell us a little bit more about your character. What can you reveal, what secrets can you reveal about your character? I really can say very little, unfortunately, about my character. Um, she is, she's uh, Opal Gelstrap. She was in the Spikes original. Uh, she's got to have it. She's a, a friend of Nola's who maybe wanted a little bit more, and that relationship is explored in this series, and that's all I'll say. Okay. <laughs> You're like, that's all I can say. Okay. And so, did you see the original prior to signing up for the series? Yes, I did. No. I was. No. It was totally serendipitous. But I watched. I watched. Spike was doing this whole limited edition moleskin notebook for She's Got to Have It. I say last summer or maybe two. Last summer. Last two summers ago. I'm shivering. Um, yeah, so cold. It's so cold. Um, and he was, you know, as opposed to he was advertising his, you know, pop-up shop in Soho to sign his. So I thought, you know, I haven't seen this movie in years. Why don't I watch it again? And I watched it, and then two weeks later, I got a an email from Kim Coleman, who does his casting, about coming in to read for it. And I thought, yes, I knew it. This was perfect timing. So I'd seen it very recently. Oh, that's awesome. And so, what do you think the major differences are, I guess, between the film and the series? Like, obviously, there's a little bit more time to expand on Nola and her relationships, and you can dig a little bit deeper to her as an artist but what do you think kind of the big picture differences are between the two I mean Brooklyn Brooklyn in this series is its own character you know and Brooklyn in 1986 is a lot different than Brooklyn is in 2017 right so I mean the backdrop is is a different place you know what I love about the show is that obviously like Nola has a lot of growth I, Four, four episodes. So I've seen, I've seen four episodes. So How what I like, <laughs> yes. So what I love about the show so far is that, like, obviously there's a lot of growth that happens based on Nola's relationships with the men, but also with her girlfriends as well. Like, there's a lot of growth that comes out of that. So what do you think that Shemeca and Nola teach each other about womanhood and growing into who they really are? I think that Nola and Shemeca teach each other about um, communication. We don't really, you know, there's a moment where we have where we're not necessarily being completely honest with each other about what we're going through and I feel like if we had if we would be honest then we would probably um, get better support and then also you know sometimes we can judge each other too harshly and so it's just kind of like listen more rather than being so quick to judge because judge um, feeling like you're being judged makes one person a person sort of like not want to be open and honest about how they're really feeling you treat a little bit more into themselves drew you specifically to your character and outside probably of I mean everyone has kind of um, a fondness for Spike Lee and a lot of the works that he's done, especially yeah. me, myself, throughout the years. But what drew you to this character specifically? Um, well, for my character, I'm playing Manny Garciella, who's Mars's best friend. Um, one thing that I thought was really interesting about what Spike did uh, when telling our story, specifically Manny and I, and Mars and I, excuse me, um, is that in Hispanic culture, um, I'm biracial, in Hispanic culture you have uh, Hispanics that gravitate sometimes more towards hip-hop culture but then you also have Hispanics that gravitate more sometimes towards rock and roll, um, you know, punk rock culture and I thought that Spike did an amazing job of capturing that and kind of um, setting that and allowing for the middle space, um, their love of bikes, to kind of bridge that gap between the two of them. So it really drew me in uh, that there was um, that he noticed that. And not only did he notice that, but he put it into his remake of the story. Yeah, and I will say that something that I have really, really enjoyed is how Spike, um, Spike and, and Tanya are really, really focusing on the Afro-Latina story. Like, yes. they make sure that, like, both cultures are equally represented in these characters. Yes. So, like, in March in particular, his sister and yourself as well. So, like, they're making sure that they have that, like, cross-cultural yes. thing down pat, and I yes. love it. I love yes, everything absolutely. about it. I think that, I think that um, <laughs> There's been an emphasis uh, on people embracing their Afro-Caribbean uh, roots, uh, myself included, and um, so, you know, I was really drawn in. And so you were talking a little bit about how when you were a child, your mom and your aunts really loved the film, um, and that kind of sparked a little bit of curiosity inside of you. So how old were you when you first saw the film, and what do you think the major differences between the film and the series? 
Okay, when I saw this, I guess it was like late in high school, early in college, something, uh, probably on VHS. Do you uh -huh. remember what those were? Yes, love them still. Uh, still yeah. love them. And yeah. 40. Still love them, still have them. Um, <laughs> but I think at the time I saw it, I was just like, well, I was drawn into, well, one of the things I always love about Spike's films is his use of music. Mm -hmm. And I, I love jazz, I'm a big jazz head. So I was drawn, I remember being drawn into the art of it. You know, the use of black and white, the use of music, the unique shots. And I guess at the time that I saw it, there still weren't many black films. And I'm always fascinated when I see something. It's, it's a little more commonplace today, okay? But 10, 20 years ago, I would be fascinated when I found out that like someone black created like you know this art form I was watching. Mm -hmm. Like a oh, black person yeah, did, did this. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You know, there was no Google back then. You couldn't find information. You just had to hear about it to get it confirmed. Right. And um, you know, watching it and thinking like, whoa. Okay, this woman is just like she do what she wants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and thinking that that was really cool. So that that's what I remember like from the film. And now, you know, he takes it a step further with more modern day issues, um, addressing the new Brooklyn and things like that. And what I take away from this is just like the strength of, of you know, security and confidence and not asking for permission for anything. Yeah. So, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.